Welcome back to the channel and thank you very much for tuning in. Before we start on today's incredibly easy tip that will help all levels of golfer, I just want to say one thing. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button. It means a huge amount to me to be able to give all this information that I've developed over this last few decades or so of, of teaching the game of golf. So please hit that subscribe button because I want to share what I know with you to help you and your game. So really important that you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell as well to get regular updates on the, on the posts that I put out there. Now, on to today's tip, and it's about pitching. Pitching is usually a shot. Everyone's got their own different definition of pitching. Um, the pitching is a shot that goes in the air 80% and rolls out 20%. Chipping is more sort of the opposite. Chipping, it's more sort of 20% in the air, 80% roll out. Now, again, a lot of people will argue with me about that, but generally, as a general rule of thumb, pitching is where the ball goes more up in the air and a little bit of rollout. So it's generally a little bit further, let's say 30, 40, 50, 60 yards, around that sort of area. And there are three most important aspects to make sure we're in control of to hit the most repeatable pitches that we possibly can do. And if we go against these these three important points, then it's going to be a real struggle to maintain any level of repeatability, any sort of consistency with to how far that ball goes. Because a lot of you out there can duff shots, we can just get that ball just rolling just literally in front of us, we've got another pitcher on, or we can thin it right the way through, it feels like we've hardly put any effort into it, we catch the equator of the ball and it just absolutely bombs through the green. We've all been there and we've all done it, but this is a three real surefire ways to make sure none of those real disastrous shots happen. First of all, we need to control the length of our swing. Now again, everyone's very different. We're all very different with how far back and through we're going to take it. We've all got different lengths of, of power. We've all got different speeds, etc. But I want you to feel the best way for you. And this takes a bit of practice. So for example, if I was going sort of 50 yards, what I would tend to feel is more what I simply call halfway back and halfway through. So when we get that club to, the, to our backswing here, it's more of what I call just simply a half turn as opposed to a big full turn. This is more of a full swing, big full turn, and this is more sort of a little 50 yard shot with a 58 degree I've got into my hand here. So more towards that sort of, what I like to call sort of chest height with those hands, and set in that golf club. So you can see the golf club's relatively further back, but the hands, the most important part, are very much sort of halfway up the chest from there. And it's the same on the way through, so same length on the way through. Obviously, we wouldn't do that for a, a five yard chip shot, for example. The five yard chip shot would maybe go just past pocket height here and past pocket height just here. So really, really, really important that we feel that difference between a shorter swing and a longer swing as well. So first and foremost, get a feeling, experiment. This takes, again, this takes a little bit of practice, but experiment with how far back and through that club needs to go. But one rule there is, as long as it's the same length back and same length through and vice versa, we don't want it shorter back and then really longer through. We wanna make sure it's a very similar length back. So hands at chest height, and then hands at chest height on the way through. Secondly, and this is probably one of the most important, which also leads on to, on to point three here as well, but the second point is really, 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 really important. We wanna control the speed of the golf club. Now, we're gonna avoid using this word, what I like to call force, okay? Because what we don't wanna do is force the club to that golf ball. We wanna maintain the momentum of this golf club. Because we've set this golf club up here, it's already got momentum. It already has to go down towards that golf ball from there. So we just have to let it gain momentum on the way through. We just have to get out of its way to get it there, i.e. turning through. The problem is what a lot of golfers do is try and then force that club to that golf ball. They then try and force that weight and that handle down to that golf ball. The problem is we're acting against the golf club work, work rather than working for the golf club. And that's when it becomes really difficult to maintain quality of control of that where that club meets the ground. So we could either fat it or thin it or even worse, top it. Or even miss it, I've seen a lot of people do as well if they try and really force the club down. So we just wanna set it on its way and let the club gain momentum. We wanna let the club gain momentum. 
okay? We don't want to add force, we don't add real speed, we just want to make sure it's momentum. So there's a little bit of speed there, yes, in the club head. We'll feel the club head traveling, but it won't be force. So avoid the force and try and gain that momentum of that golf club that's already been built up in our lovely backswing just here. Let it just, let's just turn through and let that club gain momentum. Thirdly, which really puts us onto this point as well, we need to con try and control the loft on that golf club. And again, when we're trying to force the club down to the golf ball, we either take a lot of loft off or we can add some loft. It just depends on how we react to it, how we react to that force. Because for example, if we're forcing that handle down, okay, what could happen is that handle gets way ahead and there's no loft on that golf club, so it just shoots through. Likewise, what we could also do if we force it down, we know the handle's too far ahead, so we'll then try and release very early and we'll increase that loft. Either one of those could happen. That's just a reaction. It's not what we're consciously trying to do. It's just the way we react to putting that force on it. So if we, gain, if we allow that club to gain momentum, we then control the amount of loft. And it should be ideally just slightly less than the manufacturer's standard when we come into the golf ball. So we should, again, sort of put a little bit of pressure on that golf ball by de-lofting a touch, but we don't want it too much, we don't want it too little. And the problem is we won't control that loft if we're trying to force that club down to that ground. What we need to do is maintain the momentum, and therefore, if your grip's correct, if your ball position's correct, you'll maintain the right amount of loft. Approximately 25 to 30 degrees of launch, that really impacts that loft. The loft has a huge impact on that launch angle as well, ideally for these short shots. Again, everyone's different, everyone all shot different shots, require different, different means, but ideally generally around 25, 30 degrees of launch to get that ball where we want it to go and get it in repeatable, repeatable way. So a couple of things. Really feel, again, we're in control of that length of swing. Number one, that's huge for pitching. Number two, one of, for me, the most important, we want to maintain momentum of that golf club. We don't want to add force or speed. We want to gain momentum of that golf club from that beautiful position that we've put it into up there. And three, we need to control that loft on that golf club. We don't want it too low. We don't want it too high. We want it what I like to call the Goldilocks, just right. And by maintaining the momentum of the golf club, then lo and behold, we'll get that loft where we want it to go. It really is that easy to gain momentum of that golf club and not trying to add force or speed. Try it, fit, experiment with how, lo how long that club needs to go back and through. Make sure it's the same distance. Make sure we're maintaining the speed of that swing. Make sure we're maintaining the momentum of that golf club on the way back and more importantly, on the way through, but not adding force to that golf club. There's no need, big heavy lump of metal on the end of a long shaft, there's no need to add force. Hope this helps, hope this helps your short game as well. Again, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, comment below, let me know how you're getting on with your golf game.